able to do. They at least they they are now the majority in the state house of assembly. So maybe we're expecting that the P2B tsunami is going to sweep all over. Are you also surprised with the outcome of the election no, in Anambra? No, I'm not at all. Um, every careful analysis pointed to was the fact that there wasn't going to be uh, much uh, of that kind of tsunami in Anambra state. You see, Anambra people are very discerning people. They don't vote party, they vote individuals. Let's say, for instance, in my own place in Newe, on the 25th of, the, of February, we voted P2B for presidential elections. And then the masses preferred YPP for senatorial elections. And also in that same day, they preferred APGA for a state, a Federal House of Representatives. And that was the exact thing that happened in the previous election in 2019. Recall that in 2019, when P2B was the vice presidential candidate of the PDP, in that same federal constituency, Newe North, Newe South, and Ekusiku federal constituency, you heard uh, YPP voted, PDP voted at the presidential, and then when you come to the federal house of reps, you had also uh, Labour um, APGA. So I'm not surprised that people within those federal constituencies and in Anambra are able to sort through the ballot and vote for the individuals they want. For instance, P2B emerged the presidential candidate of the Labour Party. You know that as at the time he emerged, almost all the other political parties have concluded their primaries. And then candidates have emerged also for different electoral positions, including state house of assembly positions, right? So that emergence of candidates for those positions has solidified because... If the candidates had emerged, then you can say that, okay, all those candidates that people love or people may want to associate with are in a party different from that of P2B. And so people will look for them in those parties and vote for them. Yes, there were reports of electoral violence in some of the places, but the general appraisal I have of the situation in Anambra is that people voted for people they wanted to vote, irrespective of what party or platform they are running under. Okay, so... Um... Moving forward now, let us get to the national level. Yes. Um, the Festus Kayamo have really called for the arrest of Peter Obi and uh, his uh, vice, uh, you know, Ahmed Dati. But before then, there were pictures that were circulating last night and early this morning on the social media that the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Ariwala, is on his way um, to Europe, you know, to go and arrest. He was cited on a wheelchair. Someone was pushing him on a wheelchair. And people are saying, oh, maybe he's going to Europe to go and meet Bala Ahmed. Maybe they, they want to, you know, do some underground jobs. Are mm -hmm. you concerned? Are you worried that the judiciary may be compromised? Yes. Uh, what we're dealing in Nigeria today is a complete state capture. And people should make no mistakes about it. By complete state capture, I mean that the elements who want to compromise the electoral integrity of Nigeria, who on the election day, especially during the time the results were being announced and collated, were asking people arrogantly to go to court. And there is this African proverb that I saw also on social media, that when somebody is arrogantly, when a thief is arrogantly asking you to go to court, then his brother is the justice or the judge. So um, what is happening is not mere speculation. This is work, a brilliant work by, uh, not Sahara reporters now, but by People's Gazette. And People's Gazette is a, a, a newspaper firm, an online newspaper firm, headquartered in Abuja, but draws its faculty from assets scattered all around the world. And they broke that news first, that this man had traveled, they gave the date he traveled, they gave from which airport terminal he traveled. They even said in the hotel he was in that he pretended to be sick, he was wheeled into the hotel, but the guy, the chief justice of Nigeria had ordered food in his hotel severally. And then each of the time he ordered food and the food was delivered, that he walked out to pick his own food and eat. But then he keeps on the pretense that the pretense that he is unfit, that he's unwell and had to be carried in a wheelchair. And they had reported that those shenanigans were a pretext to have a clandestine meeting with Ahmed Tinubu. By the way, he did not travel yesterday. According to the report, he traveled on the 11th, one week or maybe about 10 or 11 clear days ahead of Tinubu's travel. And so he had been quartered in a hotel. The hotel he is in is known. The places he has gone to is known. And people have pictures and videos. So when that news broke, I read it and I found it to be credible, right? And then um, uh, people also started sharing it because they saw, if you read that report, I, I encourage people to go to People's Gazette website and read the report. 
if you see it and see the detailed analysis that they made, then you see that that report is more than likely to be credible. And when people started challenging them, they said, oh no, we're not going to release the pictures and videos we have, because if we release the pictures and videos we have, it might compromise the assets we have that is giving us the information. But then, then it, they took that decision to release the, the, the pictures that will not compromise their investigation. So Nigerians are, are, are seeing the kind of country we found ourselves in. Let me recall to the first statement I made that Nigeria is dealing with the state capture. You have them running the touts, they are running the media, they are running the, the, the police, the judiciary, the military, the INEC. So what you are dealing with is a complete state capture. And that is why I made in one of the videos I made that Nigerian young people, especially young people, will have to sit up and take back their country. Gone are the days when uh, corrupt or compromised, possibly compromised justices will be having uh, clandestine meetings with presidential candidates. I mean, this is the same Supreme Court, for instance, that made Uzodima the governor of um, uh, Imo State. This is the same Supreme Court that uh, 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 discussed or debated and, uh, and, and, and decided on the matter between Mechina and Lawan, the celebrated case of... Uh, uh, the incumbent Senate president who had run for a presidency and lost the primaries and now went back to take the Senate that he did not participate in the primaries. And interestingly, the Supreme Court agreed with him. So what we're seeing is now increasingly Supreme Court of uh, technicalities and no longer substantive justice. And if that meeting that was proposed to happen in the UK had happened, only God knows to what extent it would have compromised our judiciary. And this is what we're saying, that it's not just enough to claim that election results were rigged, that it is important that we find those people who rigged the elections. And I'm glad that young people are taking up this mandate. And I'm using your platform again to call on young people to do more. Not only are we step, stopping with taking pictures and videos, but do we know these people? Do we have the account details? Can we hire forensic investigators to look into the account details? Can we charge them for money laundering in those countries? For instance, you are aware that uh, uh, former uh, Deputy Senate President Ike Kuremada and the wife have been found guilty of organ trafficking uh, uh, in another juris uh, jurisdiction. Okay, I, I think he will be sentenced to that today or, or sometime next week, right? And then, so I'm making the argument, these people who sit in positions of responsibility, INEC Chairman Marku Diakubu, people within the ICT Department of INEC, people within the police sector, top hierarchy of the military, can we identify the accounts and the houses they own abroad? And if we find criminal infractions, can we use those evidences to file cases against them in those countries, especially when they have done things that have offended the laws of those host countries. Can we, for instance, institute a criminal case against, for instance, anybody in the Supreme Court in the United Kingdom for money laundering? And those are the kind of things I expect young people to do. To not just say that the elections were compromised, but to prove who paid for the elections to be compromised and what currency those compromises were paid for. Okay, so um, before I let you go, um, the the transparency, the objectivity of the judiciary is in huge doubt, even before now, mm -hmm. um, especially when a few years ago, when that's not like you mentioned, when that Imo State case came up, I spoke with some legal practitioners and they told me that that case is a one off. It's, it's not going to happen again. But then, unfortunately, we saw it play out again with Lawan and Lechina. But that aside, now, with the legal, I, I know you must have seen the court, the court document that the Labour Party filed. Now, with, with what you saw there, you know, beyond the election, alleged rigging of the election, especially in Benue and in River State, they are also, you know, challenging the eligibility of uh, BAT to contest in that election because of uh, a drug trafficking case he was alleged to be convicted of in the state. Do you think with the legal team of Labour Party, they're going to do something spectacular in, in this case? If Nigeria was a functional democracy where the rule of law prevails, Bola Ahmed Tinubu had no business running for the office in the first place. That he was allowed to come this far to have won the nomination of his party and then to have been fraudulently declared by the Independent National Electoral Commission is a testament to the fact that Nigeria is not working as it should. And therefore, I don't find it surprising that there are alleged efforts to also compromise the judiciary who will hear that case. For instance, what we have been seeing consistently in the Nigerian judicial process is that the cases are not won by the strength and merits of your arguments and the evidences presented. For instance, if that meeting happened in London, 
and efforts were made to compromise the judiciary even before. Because as of today, the court of first instance has not even had the case. The court of first instance being the election petition tribunal, which as you would know, is populated by justices of the appeal court, who would decide in the first instance. And then the candidates or the parties involved, if they don't believe that justice has been done, will approach the Supreme Court. So you have several days before the Supreme Court had not even been approached and there were meetings in the night or alleged attempted meetings in the night to compromise those justices of the Supreme Court. So you see what you're dealing with, that you're not dealing with the strength and merit of your argument, that you're dealing with a possibly compromised judiciary. That is why it's important that as the civil litigation is building up, to make the case that this guy is not qualified to run, to make the case that he did not get the lawful votes, to make the case that he did not get the 25% uh, as required by the law, that as you are building your civil litigation case, that it's important that we initiate criminal proceedings against them in any jurisdiction where they might have offended. If we find them liable of criminal infractions in the United States, Nigerians living in the United States should sue them in the United States. If we find evidences of criminal infractions against them in the United Kingdom, Nigerians in the United Kingdom should contribute money and sue them in the United Kingdom. For instance, if, do we know whether Arewolo or whatever his name is have properties in the United States or in the UK, for instance, or uh, 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 bank accounts in those countries? Do we know whether he has bank accounts in Switzerland? Can we look into those things and try to find out? And then when we find out, can we establish that there was a connection? Do we uh, uh, have an establishment that these monies were made from illegal dealings? And if that is the case, then we can make the arguments to the courts, especially in the jurisdictions where they have committed those infractions to tell them that, look, this man can be parading himself as the chief justice of Nigeria or anything he calls himself. But look, he is a common criminal and this is the evidence of his criminal infraction. So I believe that even while we have a good case in court, I have seen the document that p be filed in court. I have also seen what article filed in court. And I think that both lawyers made brilliant cases as to why Tinubu has no business becoming even a candidate, let alone being de declared the president-elect. And that argument is solid. Right. But if things are working, that the judiciary is stable, you will be fair to expect what the reasonable judgment will be. But when you have a state capture, then they can, on technicalities, for instance, one of the technicalities could be, and I'm not making excuses, for instance, you know that the case about uh, forfeiting of money in the United States happened in the United States. What if the Supreme Court, for instance, says, oh, no, you know, this guy was tried, he was you know, uh, alleged to have done this in the United States. By the way, the United States is different from Nigeria, so no court has tried and found him guilty in Nigeria, therefore, we uphold this election. What if they made that case? So, there are a lot of technicalities to break even. The Supreme Court, once it is compromised, can find excuses to unhook even the worst criminal. And then, if they want to, they can also find excuses to jail even the most righteous person. So, this is the kind of system you are dealing with. That is why I encourage young Nigerians and those who have the resources to make every effort, not just to allege that there are attempted criminal infractions, but to bring the evidence to prove to the world and prove to the courts, both in Nigeria and outside of Nigeria. And then even if we don't file cases in court against them, we can use those evidences as a tool to lobby international governments, especially the United States, the UK, to withdraw their support from these people and insist that Nigeria's judiciary does something important. In Kenya, it happened. Kenya Supreme Court approved or obtained a presidential election. And they did not do that by just mere word of mouth. It was a lot of diplomatic efforts. It was, yes, the lawyers made a good case in court, but there were also backroom channel dealings that forced the, the court justices to sit up and do and, 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 and rule the matter based on the evidences before them. So I invite Nigerians to look for those evidences and then use those evidences to lobby international partners because Nigeria is not alone. Nigeria is one country in a committee of nations. Yes, it, you argue it is sovereign, it is independent, but as a global player, there is also some kind of peer-to-peer -peer review, peer pressures that this country can succumb into uh, uh, if given the right, right prodding. So I'm expecting young Nigerians to continue the good work that they've been doing thus far and to lastly, even intensify it. Yeah. Okay. L -l lastly, uh, Chima, um, the call by uh, Festus Keamo to arrest Peter Obi and Anadati for rallying the public, you know, trying to destabilize the peace of the country. You think that is genuine? Well, ordinarily, I have no business responding to Kayamo. Anybody who has been reading Kayamo knows that the man has lost weight. He's mere charlatan running his mouth. Uh, his words should not be attached any weight whatsoever, right? Uh, Kayamo, where was he when M. Siolomo threatened and indeed uh, carried out his threats 
on a certain demography in Lagos during the gubernatorial, uh, gubernatorial elections. Where was he? Where was he when Bola Ahmed Tinubu was seen in a viral video asking people to snatch, to run away, to take it and to run away? That power is not served the lacquer. That video is still on the internet. He, and then eventually we saw thugs snatching and running away, possibly acting on the instructions of those, that, that man. And uh, uh, the charlatan, you've mentioned his name, I don't want to dignify him by keep repeating his name, did not find his voice. And then what has P2B done to him? P2B has consistently asked his followers to be law-abiding, consistently asked his followers to, 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 to be law-abiding. And then, so, so just, you know, these people are just a man. He's just doing notice me. If he's indeed a senior advocate of Nigeria, why did he not make it to the Tinubu's legal team? Because Tinubu does not rate him. His senior advocacy is in question. Nobody rates him. And that's why you see him come acting all these theatrics. I won't be surprised if he starts maybe files a petition to the ICC tomorrow or even leads a protest tomorrow to force the police to act. So those things are mere theatrics. These guys are about to be. Their livelihood is threatened. These guys survive on state money. So again, if you take away that state money, they no longer have a means of livelihood. So once that livelihood is threatened, be sure that you will see more theatrics and drama from them. Thank you, Jim McQuiston, for that in-depth analysis. I really appreciate that. You are a public affairs commentator and a lover of good governor. Thank you for your time, man. Thank you, Kedna, for having me. And thank you for the good work Authority FM is doing in educating our populace. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. So, guys, thank you for tuning in, and then uh, we'll see you around. I'm owing out an in-depth analysis of what happened during the elections. It's been quite incredibly busy for me. Uh, I've been in between cities, and then the last time we tried to do this, there was no stable internet. So, appear uh, with me. Um, the, the live will happen soon. I pray it is this weekend. And when it happens, we will go into in-depth analysis of what is happening. My interest at this time are about the ethnic uh, ethnic profiling. Uh, we're talking about resurgence of thuggery and ballot box snatching. I also want to discuss issues around the protest. How do we snatch or get back Nigeria from these people? And then, you know, imagine issues. So these discussions, I have laid the outline. I have done the extensive work. Unfortunately, we've not found the time to have this discussion. So you have my promises that in due time, especially if God supplies the grace, that we'll come back to, the, uh, to discuss these issues. Again, I thank you all for listening and then um, uh, do have a pleasant day ahead.